Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the vestibular system. Okay, so we're currently in the process of discussing the vestibular ocular reflex, and we're about to get to the juicy bit. We're about to see how is each of the semicircular canals connected up to the extraocular muscles that it is going to need to activate in order for the vestibular ocular reflex to work. And I've said over and over again, we're just going to look at this neural circuitry for the right hand side. So we are going to see how the right horizontal, and in fact, I think I should put a little R here, how the right horizontal semicircular canal is connected to the right medial rectus and the left lateral rectus, how the right anterior semicircular canal is connected to these two, and how the right posterior semicircular canal is connected to those two. Okay, but the mirror image of this will be true for the left-hand side, and it is important that the same thing is operating on the left-hand side, because as I stated at the end of the previous video, these things work in pairs, and when one's activated, its partner will be inactivated, and it's important that you're not just activating the muscles connected to the activated semicircular canal, but also inactivating the ones connected to the inactivated semicircular canal, because those muscles will be moving the eyes in the opposite direction in that plane to the ones that have been activated. Okay, so let's now see the neural circuitry. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to do it on this picture. This is the anatomic picture showing you where the various nuclei are. What I'm going to now draw out is a physiologist's picture. So we'll move this up and let's draw a physiologist's picture. So right at the bottom, let's put the vestibular nuclear complexes on either side. Okay, and we're going to draw them very large so that we've got lots of space to actually show the neurons inside. Okay, and remember the vestibular nuclear complexes are made up of four separate nuclei, the superior one here, the me sorry, the lateral one here, the medial one here, and the inferior one here. Okay, and we're imagining that we're looking from the front, so this would be the right vestibular nuclear complex, and just for completion I will draw the left vestibular nuclear complex over here, although we're not actually going to use this one, I just want to put it in there for the picture to be complete. So here is the left vestibular nuclear complex, here's the medial vestibular nucleus, the lateral and inferior. Right, next let's put on the abducent nerve nuclei. So these are going to be just above the vestibular nuclear complexes. So we'll have the right one there, and then we'll have the left one here. Okay, and then that gap in between the two adjacent nerve nuclei, that's going to be uh, my space for the medial longitudinal fasciculus. What I want to do just before I put on the medial longitudinal fasciculus is now put on the other four uh, extraocular uh, nuclei here. So we'll have them up here. So this is the ocular motor nu nerve nuclei on both sides. So this is the right ocular motor nerve nucleus and the left ocular motor nerve nucleus, this is the uh, right trochlear nerve nucleus and the left trochlear nerve nucleus, and now I'm going to put on the medial longitudinal fasciculus, so these are going to be the medial longitudinal fasciculi, and it will go up like this. Okay, so that's everything nicely shown on here, so I might just label a few things up, so uh, we'll have this labelled up as um, cranial nerve 6 nucleus, this is cranial nerve 4 nucleus, this is cranial nerve 3 nucleus, um, this structure here is the medial longitudinal fasciculus on either side, uh, and then we've got the vestibular nuclear complexes down here. Okay, so that's all the stuff we need. As you can see, this is sort of anatomically true, but it's a much sort of cruder picture than what we had previously, and this is just so that I can show the connections. Okay, so we are doing this, remember, on the right-hand side. So let's begin with the horizontal semicircular canal. I want to see how is the right horizontal semicircular canal connected up to these muscles, the right medial rectus and the left lateral rectus. Now, the first thing I need to say is there are certain 
vestibular nuclei that are going to participate in the circuitry of the vestibular ocular reflex. So you remember me telling you that all of the vestibular nuclear complexes get uh, branches of the bipolar neurons coming from all the different sensory parts of the uh, vestibular apparatus coming to them. I also said that all of the different vestibular nuclei are going to have axons, sorry, neurons that are going to send their axons up to the cerebral cortex via the thalamus. So the um, vestibulothalamocortical pathway. But as far as the vestibular ocular pathway is concerned, really the major two nuclei that are going to be involved here are the superior vestibular nuclei, nucleus rather, and the medial vestibular nucleus. I'm only going to be paying attention to these two. Okay, so what I mean by that is that only these two are going to have neurons in them, and they're going to have neuron cell bodies in them that are going to be part of this vestibular ocular reflex pathway. The lateral and the inferior one aren't going to really participate in this much at all. So these are the two we're going to be concentrating on. Okay, so let's now do the horizontal pathway. So from the right horizontal semicircular canal then, here is one of these bipolar neurons here, so here's its cell body. Here's its peripheral process, and here comes its central process. And of course, its central process will probably have lots of branches going to all of the different uh, vestibular nuclei. However, to keep this simple, we'll just have one going into the superior or the medial vestibular nucleus here for our pathway, as far as we're concerned. And now, it's going to sign up on a second order neuron that's going to be part of this vestibular ocular reflex pathway. So the question is, where is this second order neuron going to go? Well, let's think about what this needs to, what we, what we need to do. We need to activate the right medial rectus and the left lateral rectus. So what actually happens is this is going to cross over to the left-hand side, and it's going to go into the left abducent nerve nucleus. Now that makes sense because remember we want this to activate the left lateral rectus, and this is the control hub for the left lateral rectus. Remember, abducent nerve nuclei, they control the ipsilateral lateral rectus, so the left abducent nerve nucleus, that will have the alpha motor neuron cell bodies that control the left lateral rectus muscle. So this is looking rather good, but what will actually happen here is it will branch into two, okay, and one of the things it will do is it will activate neurons in here in this nucleus that are actually going to go and innovate the left lateral rectus. So here it comes, it's coming out in the abducent nerve, so this will be with the abducent nerve here, and it will innovate the left lateral rectus just as we wanted it to. Okay, so this is an alpha motor neuron that's in this abducent nerve nucleus that's actually going to innovate the ipsilateral lateral rectus muscle. However, it's going to innovate other neurons in here that aren't alpha motor neurons that will actually innovate the left lateral rectus and instead are going to project to higher up um, ocular, uh, well, sorry, uh, extraocular muscle nuclei. So let me show you this now. So here is another neuron that it's going to innovate, and what this is going to do is it's going to cross over to the uh, right medial longitudinal fasciculus. It's going to ascend up in the right medial longitudinal fasciculus, and then it's going to go into the right ocular motor nucleus. So again, this is all making sense because we want to activate the right medial rectus muscle, and of course the control for the right medial rectus muscle is in the right ocular motor nucleus. So then it will activate alpha motor neurons here that are going to go and innovate the right medial rectus. So this would be cranial nerve 3 here, it would be going out in cranial nerve 3, and it would be innovating the right medial rectus muscle. So I hope that's all in view. So this is the pathway by which activation of these bipolar neurons from the right horizontal semicircular canal is actually going to result in contraction of these two muscles. Okay, the bipolar neuron will come into its ipsilateral um, medial and superior vestibular nuclei, and there it will activate neurons that are going to go into the contralateral uh, uh, abducent nerve nucleus here and activate both alpha motor neurons that will actually innervate the contralateral, in this case, and left lateral rectus, and also innervate neurons that will cross over into the uh, right, so ipsilateral to the vestibular nucleus, um, the right medial longitudinal fasciculus here, and go up to the 
ocular motor nucleus and activate alpha motor neurons that will innervate the right medial rectus muscle. And the mirror image of this will be happening on the other side, okay? And what that would mean is that when you turn your head to the right, this one will become activated and the one on the left hand side will become inactivated. So you'd end up contracting the right medial rectus and the left lateral rectus, but you'd end up relaxing the left medial rectus. So if you imagine taking the mirror image of this on the other side, you'd have the left medial rectus and the right lateral rectus, which is exactly what you want to do because those two muscles move the eyes in the opposite direction to these ones. Okay, these ones will move it to the eyes to the left, i.e. opposite to the movement of the head, whereas the other two would move the eyes to the right, i.e. the same as the movement of the head. So this is all hopefully making sense now how this is actually going to work. So I won't draw on the, contra uh, the contralateral pathway because, as I say, we're going to put on, we have two more pathways to draw on here, and I don't want to make it too confusing, but the mirror image of this would also be true. Okay, so how many neurons does this overall involve? One, two, and then three in the case of innovating the left lateral rectus, and of course it's four in the case of innovating the right medial rectus. Okay, so that's the way then that the horizontal semicircular canals are connected to the muscles that they're going to innovate, i.e. the ipsilateral medial rectus and the contralateral lateral rectus. Let's now have a look at the right anterior semicircular canal. How is it going to be connected up? So again, we'll start off with a bipolar neuron. I'll do this now in a different colour. So we'll do this in green, I think. So again, here is a bipolar neuron. Its peripheral process will be innovating the crista of the right anterior semicircular canal. It will be innovating a hair cell in that crista. Uh, and then its central process is coming into the vestibular nuclear complex and it will most likely branch, but for simplicity we're just interested in one of these branches, which is here in one, either the medial or the superior vestibular nuclear, uh, nuclei, and it's then going to innovate one of these neurons that's going to participate in the vestibular ocular pathway. Okay, so what's going to happen here? So here's the second order neuron here, so let's just remind ourselves of what we want to happen. We want this to be connected up to the right superior rectus and the left inferior oblique. Well, those are both controlled by which ocular motor nucleus? Think now. You might be tempted to say, well, this one's connect controlled by the right ocular motor nucleus and this one's controlled by the left ocular motor nucleus, but remember the complexity that I told you. Superior rectus muscles, superior recti muscles probably is more correct, they are controlled by the contralateral ocular motor nucleus. So this is very simple. Those two are both controlled by the left ocular motor nucleus, this thing up here. So it's obvious, isn't it, what's going to happen next? You don't have to be clever at all for this. You can work it out perfectly. Okay, it's going to cross over into the contralateral medial longitudinal fasciculus. It's going to ascend up, and then it's going to go into the left ocular motor nucleus here. And there it's going to branch like so, and innovate two different types of alpha motor neuron. One that's going to innovate the right superior rectus, so this will cross over, go into the right ocular motor nerve, like so, even though it's got its cell body in the left um, ocular motor nucleus, it'll cross over to go in, uh, run with the right ocular motor nerve, because that's going to go to the right eye, and it will innovate the right superior rectus muscle. And then the other type of alpha motor neuron that will innovate will be alpha motor neurons that are going to go into the ipsilateral ocular motor nerve, i.e. the left ocular motor nerve, uh, and will innovate the left inferior oblique muscle. Okay, so that's the way that activation of the right anterior semicircular canal will actually result in the contraction of those two muscles. And again, you will have the mirror image of this on the left-hand side. So um, on the left-hand side, it will be going up to the uh, right ocular motor nucleus and it will be innovating the right inferior oblique and the left superior rectus. Okay, so that's the right anterior semicircular canal. Finally, let's do the right posterior semicircular canal. So we'll do this in, I think, orange. So again, here is a bipolar neuron. The peripheral process will be innovating one of the hair cells in the right posterior semicircular canal's crista. Okay. 
and it will be coming in. Again, it will most likely have lots of branches, but here's a branch that's going to innervate one of these neurons that's going to be part of the vestibular ocular uh, reflex pathway. And the question is, what is this going to do? So let's just remind ourselves of what we want to activate. We want to activate the right superior oblique, and we want to activate the left inferior rectus. So let's think this through. Right superior oblique, what's that controlled by? Well, it's controlled by the left trochlear nucleus. Okay, this one up here. Remember, the trochlear nerve nuclei, they control the contralateral superior oblique muscle. Left inferior rectus, meanwhile, that's controlled by the left ocular motor nerve nucleus. So again, it's pretty obvious what's going to happen here. Here is the second order neuron, and it's going to go into the contralateral medial longitudinal fasciculus, like so. It's going to give a branch off into the contralateral trochlear nerve nucleus here, and it will also give a branch off into the contralateral, in this case the left, uh, ocular motor nerve nucleus there. So here then it will be innovating muscles, so here, uh, well alpha motor neurons, sorry, it will be innovating alpha motor neurons which will innovate muscles. So here is an alpha motor neuron in this left trochlear nerve nucleus which will cross over and come out as part of the um, right trochlear nerve to go and innovate the right superior oblique muscle. Okay, so this is the right superior oblique and this is cranial nerve um, 4 on the right hand side here. Okay, and then um, up here it'll be innovating alpha motor neurons in the left ocular motor nerve nucleus which will be coming out with the left ocular motor nerve and will be going off to innovate the left inferior rectus muscle, so LIR there. Okay, now you see why I didn't want to have to draw it on both sides, because it's complicated already just with it drawn on one side. Ooh, and oh, it is in the view, that's good. Um, so um, that's the reason I didn't want to draw it on both sides, because it would have made it even more complicated, an even more hideous picture than we've got here. So this is the connections then of all of the uh, semicircular canals on the right hand side, how they are connected to the muscles that they are going to be activated. Now I'd just like to talk you through, just to make sure that you've got this concept, I'm sure you have, but I want to absolutely nail it home, I want to talk through a pair in the case of these more complicated pairs. So for instance we'd have the pair, the right anterior with the left posterior, and the left posterior would be the mirror image of what I've drawn here for the right posterior. So it would be innovating the left superior oblique muscle and the right inferior rectus muscle. Okay, so the idea then is that when one of them is activated, the other will be inactivated. So when the right anterior semicircular canal is activated, it'll make the right superior rectus and the left inferior oblique activated. Its partner, which is the left posterior semicircular canal, so this reflected onto this side, will be inactivated and therefore the muscles that it innervates, which are the left superior oblique and the right inferior rectus, they will be inhibited, and that's good because those muscles do the exact opposite of the right superior rectus and the left inferior oblique. So the right superior rectus, that moves the eyes upwards in this sort of direction, left inferior oblique also moves the eyes upwards in this sort of direction, which is exactly what you want to do, because when this one's activated, that means that you've moved your head downwards and on that strange sort of angle, like so. Okay, so that's perfectly appropriate. The muscles that have been inhibited are the left superior oblique and the right inferior rectus, and those both move the eyes downwards and in that direction, so you want those to be inhibited. So I hope it's apparent how all of this works beautifully, how all of the semicircular canals work in pairs. When one is activated, the other will be inhibited, and each of the semicircular canals controls two muscles, and those two extra ocular muscles uh, will be, uh, well, the, the four extra ocular muscles innervated by a pair, two of them will be moving the eyes in one direction in that plane, and two of them will be moving the eyes in the opposite direction, and you want the two that move the eyes in the opposite direction to the motion of the head to be activated, and the two that are operating, moving the eyes in the same direction as the motion of the head to be inactivated as part of this vestibular ocular reflex. 
So, that is the vestibular ocular reflex now complete. What I do want to just say something about is something that I promised I would come back to right at the end, which is the fact that actually this is not the whole story for the vestibular ocular reflex. What we have studied is, strictly speaking, called the rotational vestibular ocular reflex. It's all been about rotations of the head which have been sensed by the rotational vestibular sensory apparatus, namely the semicircular canals, and we've then responded by rotations of the eyes. Okay, this is the very well understood vestibular ocular reflex. Uh, it's the one for which these beautiful pathways are all understood, uh, and when people usually say the vestibular ocular reflex, this is what they mean. However, there is another vestibular ocular reflex, which is known as the translational vestibular ocular reflex, which I haven't talked about. This is all about you moving in a straight line, so maybe uh, you're sidestepping, okay, so, or you might be moving forwards, and then your eyes will move relative to your head in order to try and fix your retinal image, despite the fact that you've got translational motion. So the translational vestibular ocular reflex is all about the head having a linear motion, a translational motion, and the eyes trying to move relative to the head in order to fix the retinal image as best they can. The reason I have not discussed the translational vestibular ocular reflex is that it's much more complicated and the pathways are not understood anywhere near as well as they're understood for the rotational vestibular ocular reflex. The reason is, the translational movement is going to be sensed, of course, by the otolith organs. However, we know with the otolith organs there is a huge complexity, because the otolith organs can't actually distinguish between linear motion and just a static head tilt. From uh, vestibular information, you can't distinguish between the two, and therefore the translational vestibular ocular reflex, it can't just involve the vestibular sensory apparatus. For this rotational vestibular ocular reflex, everything is done purely on the commands of the rotational vestibular system, so the semicircular canals. Everything was worked out just from their information. You can't do the translational vestibular ocular reflex just with the information from the otolith organs because you can't distinguish between static head tilt and linear motion, and static head tilt and linear motion require very different responses. You don't need if translational vestibular ocular reflex to static head tilt because your head's not moving if you've just got it on a static head tilt, so you don't need to be moving your eyes to balance some non-existent movement, okay? So, what has to also be part of the translational vestibular ocular reflex is other information from other sensory systems, in particular the one that I keep coming back to which is proprioceptive information from the muscles in the neck which can tell you about the position of your neck and therefore tell you if your head is on a static head tilt or whether this information coming from the otolith organs is about translational motion. So, for that reason, the fact that lots of other sensory information is going to have to go into the translational vestibular ocular reflex, it's far more complicated, evidently, and we don't have a good understanding of it. But be aware that that does exist when you're moving linearly in a straight line, up, uh, forwards, or sideways. Uh, your eyes will also move within your head to try and fix the retinal image as well, and that's known as the translational vestibular ocular reflex. So overall, these two different types of vestibular ocular reflex are what we mean by the vestibular ocular reflex, although, as I say, when people talk about the vestibular ocular reflex for academic purposes, uh, as in, this is what medical students should know, they usually are talking about the rotational vestibular ocular reflex, and that's the one that the pathways are beautifully understood in medical students students should know this diagram. Okay, right, uh, so we will have a break here, uh, I'll have a calm down, and uh, we'll come uh, back in the next video and we'll discuss the vestibulospinal reflex to finish off with.